It doesn't happen often, but on occasion I'll run into a game that feels totally unique. Recently, Volcano Princess was that game for me, and it opened me up to a genre I not only wouldn't expect to like, but was shocked to find has a following. Volcano Princess is an RPG, but also a parent simulation game. I've apparently been living under a rock, but this type of game has been around for a bit with other games previously released like this. You play the role of a king and a father who has the massive task of guiding your young daughter through life in the hopes that she'll grow into a strong, independent woman and be successful. It's surprisingly an easy scenario to get into, especially if you have kids yourself, and I'd be lying if I told you I didn't feel a little emotion the first time I saw my daughter grow from toddler to teen, where her first expression to me was that she no longer needed me like she did as a child. Mechanically, the game is deep. There are a series of things you must learn to navigate your fatherly duties, ensuring the proper and well-adjusted growth of your child. You must manage not only a slew of stats for both you and your daughter, but you must also manage money, skills, schooling, monster fighting, friends, cooking, stamina, items, and personal conflicts through her life. Starting off, you need to choose what type of father you wish to be for your daughter, which will set the standard set of goals you'll have during the toddler days. You'll get three options to choose from, each color coded and each presenting a unique set of requirements as well as specific tasks. You're limited in the early game, which when you're new, it really helps a lot and it just so happens to make sense in the game as it'd be weird to have your toddler fighting monsters in the forest, racing horses, or receiving love letters from suitors. The early years will be spent instead acclimating to the city and the basic mechanics it offers, learning to plant crops and some light cooking, and the biggest focus being going to school to build skills which set the foundation for her future. The town offers a few areas to lightly explore at first, a lakeside area where you can draw on an easel, grow crops, and cook. There's an inn where you can socialize with townsfolk, eat, or listen to stories from a bard. Finally, you have your home where you can play games, build your knowledge, talk to your daughter about life, and where you can choose your class schedule for the month. School is done in a fun way, I thought. You have a little itinerary on the left and a set of classes on the right. Each option shows you the type of class, the base skills needed to do well in the class, how quickly you'll learn that subject in percentage form, and a brief synopsis of the class. As I was having issues managing the mood of my child, which comes with drastic consequences of lowered stats, I realized this schedule also allows for free time to spend with father, which does wonders for increasing mood. Once your schedule is set, you can confirm it, and a new screen pops up which shows you a one-by-one -one breakdown of what happened during each class or free time. Each activity is shown in picture form, and a display of the performance is shown on the bottom of the screen, going from terrible to perfect, which is based off the difference between your skill and the required level of skill needed for the class. I really like this part of the game for some reason, as it was fun to choose the classes and then see how the proverbial dice would roll in each situation. You also get a midday break where you spend time with your child and choose what story to read her. After you've completed so many days, which are calculated as months, you'll get to participate in a year-end festival where your daughter will gain a little rival and you'll finish off the year with the success or failure of an event moving you into the next stage of her life. The game has some poor translations at this current moment, which the developers state they are actively addressing, but the first part of the game really does an amazing job of wholesomely creating the experience of bonding with your daughter. As I mentioned earlier, it emotionally sets you up for some required heartbreak as your daughter moves from toddler to teen. Moving into the teen years, the game really starts to roll forward at a much heavier pace. This starts with a cold realization your daughter truly has grown up. A set of scenarios with your daughter praising you and enjoying time with you harshly flips to your daughter starting her teen years by letting you know that she no longer wishes to count on you as she pursues her own ambitions and finds independence. The game also becomes vastly more complicated with mechanics as a slew of additional features are added to your daily list. You again choose the type of father you wish to be seen as, you choose a school faction to participate in, gain the ability to fight monsters in the forest, horse races become available, and the relationship portion of the game greatly expands to include a love system where you'll meet suitors and friends, enabling you to receive letters from each and choose your responses. On top of all that, the town square is now accessible and offers a multitude of options including jobs your daughter can work at, stores you can buy stat boost items and clothes from, and a blacksmith which you can use to upgrade your armor and weapons at for higher success levels fighting monsters. 
I detail each of the previous, but do not wish to make a 20 minute video on the game. This portion of the game really picks up though, and you'll feel really overwhelmed very quickly your first time experiencing it. I have not completed the teen years as of the writing of this video script, but look forward to seeing what comes after. If you like this content, hit like and subscribe to Yokoso Otaku for more news, reviews, and anime gaming.